The British Legion was first referenced by the Cambridge Chronicle on January 2nd, 1779, and it was reported that 400 men deserted from George Washington's army to join the newly formed legion that was composed of infantry and light dragoons. Lord Cathcart and Tarleton assembled the legion at Kingsbridge, along with the Queen's Rangers on the command of Lieutenant Colonel John Graves Simcoe. After a little dispute between Simcoe and Cathcart of who was in command, Cathcart was transferred along with the British Legion infantry, and Tarleton stayed with Simcoe. Tarleton was put in command of the Legion Dragoons, and Simcoe took an instant liking to the young Tarleton. Simcoe once wrote that, In Tarleton, he had a colleague full of enterprise and spirit, and anxious of every opportunity of distinguishing himself. Now, the two commanders soon had a singular and narrow escape. They were scouting the front around Kingsbridge, and Simcoe was describing a private road to Tarleton. Sergeant Wright, who was Simcoe's orderly, alighted and took down a rail fence in DeVoe's farmyard. The Stockbridge Indians, about 60 in number, excellent marksmen, had just joined Mr. Washington's army, Simcoe wrote. Around this farm, the Indians were ambuscaded. Wright had scarce mounted his horse when there were officers, for some trivial reason, alter their intentions in spurring their horses soon rode out of sight and out of reach of the Indian marksmen. Ambush is a sorry little game, but it can be played by two, Tarleton and Simcoe figured out. Learning of cavalry stationed by the day near Mamanrek to cover the country and protect some sick horses in the salt marshes, Simcoe determined to surprise them. The Queen's Rangers and the Legion marched during the night. Simcoe wrote, when they arrived at their appointed station, Lieutenant Colonel Tarleton, with the cavalry, ambuscaded the road on which the enemy's guard was to approach. They waited during the early hours, and at 6 o'clock, as he has previously ordered, Lieutenant Colonel Tarleton left his post where the party of the enemy instantly appeared in his rear, said Simcoe. Every other morning, the enemy had passed the point of ambush at 5 o'clock, but on this morning, a sergeant's horse had broken loose. He had chased it an hour before his patrol could ride. Lieutenant Colonel Andres Emmerich's chasseurs had a brush with the Americans on August 30th, 1779. They learned that among the Indian scouts was Chief Nimham, ordering a day's provisions to be cooked. Simcoe led the rangers soon and the chasseurs and dragoons out early next morning for an all-out ambuscade. Nimham's scouts discovered Emmerich's chasseurs on the march. The Indians ambuscaded themselves behind the rail fences that lined the road. When the chasseurs marched in a range, the Indian marksmen opened fire. Hearing the firing, Simcoe rushed forward with the Cringe Rangers, and Tarleton galloped the green horse wide to the right and cut in behind them. Old Nenhan, who was formerly of England and despised Englishmen, died like a chief. When he saw the rangers close in upon his rear, he shouted to his braves to flee. I am old and I will die here. He cried. Recognizing Colonel Simcoe, Nimham attacked and wounded Simcoe, but fell to the sword of Sergeant Wright. At the command of their chief, the Indians fled. The green horse pursued them down Carthalent's Ridge. Tarleton selected one of the fugitives and ran him down. Standing in his stirrups, Tarleton made a powerful slash with his enormous saber, but he missed. The momentum of his stroke pulled him from his horse. With a scream, the Indians sprang upon Tarleton. The brave's musket had been discharged, and he had no bayonet, so he reached for a knife. As he raised his arm for the death stroke, Tarleton's dragoon orderly sabered him. That active officer had a narrow escape, Simcoe dryly wrote. After defeating the Stockbridge Indians, Simcoe attempted to trap Colonel Gist at Babcock's house. Before daybreak on September 16th, he led the Queen's Rangers, the British Legion, and the Chasseurs from Kingbridge. Lieutenant Colonel Tarleton, with the whole of the cavalry, was to proceed to cover the right and arrive at Valentine's Hill by daylight. When the commander sprang the trap, they were surprised to find that Major Pritchkin had not seized Philip C. Bridge and that Gist and his troops had escaped over it. Lieutenant Colonel Tarleton fell in with a patrol of cavalry and dispersed it. The Royal Gazette for September 19th added details to Simcoe's narrow escape. 
At the same time, Lieutenant Colonel Tarleton with the Dragoons charged a body of rebels posted on Valentine's Hill, but as the enemy was near a very thick wood, they took shelter from where the horse could not possibly act, which prevented their sustaining any other loss aside from the capture of a few of their members. A few days later, Simcoe and Tarleton patrolled as far as White Plains. Tarleton signaled that he was going to investigate an enemy picket. Simcoe rode forward to survey and sketch the grounds that Washington had occupied in the Battle of the White Plains. Lieutenant Colonel Tarleton soon after returned. He had put the enemy's pickets to flight and taken some prisoners. So that autumn, Tarleton and Simcoe basically just hung out and they were patrolling various areas for supplies, um, any remnants left of the Indian marksmen, and then after a while, around eh, October, November, Tarleton was actually transferred, and that was the end of the short campaign of Tarleton and Simcoe. I want to thank you all for tuning in to this short episode of the, my Tarleton series. I hadn't made an episode in a while. I am definitely going to be doing more of these. I'll hopefully start doing one a week. I was rereading The Green Dragoon, which... If you haven't read that, it's a really good book. It's The Lives of Bannister Tarleton and Mary Robinson. It gives a lot of insight into some of the lesser-known campaigns, battles, and stories of the American Revolutionary War and in Britain all the way up until the Napoleonic Wars. So I hope you all have enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did. Leave a comment, and have a great day, everyone.